people, Sumerians. Today, the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Just a few considerations that there's only one soul that has been absolutely perfect in the human race. We know that Adam and Eve, both of them created perfect by God, they decided to fall. We also know that Jesus Christ, who is true God and true man, perfect in his humanity, but he is united hypostatically to the divinity. But there is only one pure human being in the entirety of the human race who is perfect from the first moment of conception unto all eternity. There must be at least one perfect human being, one perfect person in the human race. And this one is our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we can be proud to be of the same race that she is, because one of us at least was perfect. And also, when she came into this world, she came into a world that was absolutely not perfect. When Adam and Eve were created, they were created in a world that was perfect. They were created in the most perfect circumstances and in the most beautiful place they were put in the garden of paradise. But our Holy Mother, the most perfect of all, she was born in a time of great darkness. And she was born in a time in a race that was filled with sin and imperfection and evil all around her. And yet she remained completely, absolutely perfect. And the fact is that no human being, no one, can go to perfection. No one can climb towards God without passing through her, without going toward her. Remember that it is only because of that day, 2,022 years ago, when the angel Gabriel appealed to her, appeared to her in the house of Nazareth and asked her to be the mother of God. And St. Bernard tells us she did not have to say yes. And that a question that was asked of the angel Gabriel by heaven to the Blessed Virgin Mary at the age of 15, upon that question hinges all of my life, all of our lives, and all of history. And she was there alone in that house of Nazareth, and she was there to answer the great question, Will you give God, give man, make, give God a man, make God man? And will you listen to every request of heaven, unlike Adam and Eve, and your ancestors, and also those who follow after you? Because God can only enter into this world through a most perfect portal. Though He, though he allowed the world to become filled with sin, God cannot enter any, even the smallest stain of sin. The place where he enters has to be absolutely 100% perfect, and it is a human place that he enters. Therefore, it must be entered with a free will. She has to be able to say of her own free will, without being forced in any way, that she will do what God wishes. Fiat miki secundum verbum tuum. She simply said, let it be done unto me according to thy word. When the time of judgment comes, every human being on earth, from the time of Adam, and the first death of Cain, of Abel, by the murder, by the hand of Cain, until the very ending of the world, and the last death on the day of judgment, all that is going to be asked of each of us is, was God's will done according to God's word? He gave us a free will. We can say no to His Word. We can say no to what He wants us to do. He asks us to follow Him. He asked a young man, rich young man, follow me. He walked away sad. He asked Judas to repent. And Judas despaired and refused to repent. He asked so many to follow Him. So many to adore Him. So many to do what was necessary to become happy in this life and happy in the next. But He forced no one to follow Him. And He forced no one to obey Him. Because He gave us a free will. 
But He also gave us the grace to follow Him. And He gave us helps and aids to be able to follow Him. And the principal aid and the principal help that He gave us is our mother. Remember when Adam decided to eat the forbidden fruit? It was only because of the ministration of Eve. Had Eve not taken the fruit from the tree, and if Eve had not brought the true fruit to Adam, and if Eve had not said, you should eat this fruit, Adam would never have eaten it. And so God willed also that the fruit of salvation, the fruit of happiness, <coughs> the fruit of eternal peace, is only taken from a tree of, uh, from by, by the Blessed Virgin Mary, <coughs> carried to us by her. And she encourages us to eat of the fruit, to do whatever He tells us. These are the last words we have recorded of her in the sacred scripture when she said to servants about water pots, fill the pots with water. Very easy task, not difficult at all. And carry the water pots to the chief steward. That's all I ask you to do. Do whatever he tells you, and he's not going to tell you to do anything difficult. He's not going to tell you to do anything that's beyond your strength. He's not going to tell you to do anything that isn't going to make you happy. But somehow, unless we hear her say, do whatever he tells you, unless she is the one that we look to, it is not possible for us to do what he tells us. The great tragedy of our times is that there are many souls who believe that they can go to God without Mary, and they can go to Christ without Mary, and then go to the church without our Blessed Mother, without the Holy Mother Mary. We cannot go anywhere without her. And where was she when God came to use her as the instrument to make us able to obey Him, follow Him and love Him? She was alone at prayer in her house at Nazareth. She was contemplating God. She was with God in her mind and her heart. And she was a magnet that called down God from heaven. And God sent an angel from heaven to go down and speak to her and ask her to be the mother of God. And if she will be the mother of God, she will also be the mother of Saros. She will be the mother of grace. She will be the mother of the victory over Satan. She will be the mother of all things good and the defeating of all things bad. The angel Gabriel asked her, Fiat, then wilt thou be the mother of God? How can this be since I do not know man? It's not possible to follow God and know anything other than Him, anything outside of Him. And it's not possible to know God and have any stain of sin in, a, in her. She is being asked to have perfect knowledge and perfect love. The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow thee. The power of the Most High shall over, overcome thee. And then the God the Son will take place, enter into her womb. Fiat Miki secundum verbum tuum. We have to understand the only way God can enter our homes is if we say, let, let, let it be done to me according to thy word. He will not force himself into our homes if we lock him out. If we lock him out of our hearts, he will not force himself in. We must repeat the word of the Holy Mother. Let it be done unto me, according to thy word. And what is going to be done? We are going to be brought into the state of sanctifying grace. We are going to be filled with faith. We are going to be given the strength to overcome all the enemies of God. We are going to be given interior peace. We are going to be made the members of the army of God and get strength to conquer all of the obstacles and overcome all the obstacles that the devil may put into our way. And we will be rightly called the children of God. All these things happen by just simply saying that it be done unto me according to thy word. Many souls want things to be done unto them. They want to live in happiness. They want to live in peace. But they don't want it to be done according to God's word. God wants some souls to follow him in the army of the priesthood. He wants other souls to follow him in the sisterhood and, the mother, and, and, and in, the con, in the monasteries. He wants others to follow in their married life. He wants all to follow in every single thing they do in this world. But we must do according to His Word. So we ask the grace to, uh, to enter the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that what we do will be according to the Word. 
Let it, let it be done unto me according to thy word. We must love our lady with all our hearts. When we read it, we dedicate our society to St. Pius X of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And of course, if we renew our promises on this December the 8th, we do each year the Immaculate Conception. We renew our promises as members of the Society of St. Pius X, the Apostles of Jesus and Mary. And we are going to be taken as the thing and possession of our Holy Mother. We'll say that at the end of our prayer. O Lord, I am thy Mary, I am thy possession and thy thing. Use me as thou wilt. And if we become the possession and the thing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, then we can be used for any number of good, an infinite amount of good, and be a part of the restoration of our Holy Mother, the Church, be a part of the spreading of His Kingdom. But there's no other way than, than the way of belonging to the Holy Mother. So we'll ask the grace each of us to renew our consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary, ratify and renew our consecration to her, and remember that the only way in which we can be pleasing to God is that His Word be done according to us, inside of us, that His will be done inside of us, <coughs> according to His Word. And only the Blessed Virgin Mary, only our Mother, can teach us how to do that. Because I know that, and God bless you all, in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.